Hello and welcome to day 9 of Advent of Code and I will be soon running out of fingers to do this. Um, yeah, let's just start. We will again try to solve both puzzles today and we will be using Kotlin to do this. So let's go. Uh, day 9, smoke basin. These caves seem to be lava tubes. Parts are even still volcanically active. Small hydrothermal vents release smoke into the caves that slowly settle like rain. If you can model how the smoke flows through the caves, you might be able to avoid it and be that much safer. The submarine generates a hate map. The floor of the nearby caves for you. That's your puzzle input. Smoke flows through the lowest point of the area it's in. For example, consider the following hate map. Yada yada yada. Each number corresponds to the height of the particular location, where 9 is the highest and 0 is the lowest the location can be. Your first goal is to find the low points, the locations that are lower than any of the edges and locations. Okay. Most locations have four adjacent... adjacent... I have no idea how to pronounce this. <laughs> Adjacent. 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 Locations up, down, left, and right. Locations on the edge or corner of the map have three or two locations respectively. Diagonal locations do not count. Okay, that is good to know. In the above example, there are four low points, all highlighted. One, zero, five, and five. Um, two are in the first row, one is in the third row, and one is in the bottom row. All, location, all other locations have um, some low adjacent locations and are not low points. Let's see. So this is five, and every number next to it is larger. Same for this, same for that, same for that. And if we pick like a random number like six, there's the five. Mm, where's the small one here? Four. There are definitely lower numbers next to it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, the risk level of a low point is one plus its height. In the above example, the risk levels of the low points are two, one, six, six. Okay, one more. Okay. The sum of the risk levels of all low points on the height map is therefore 15. Find all of the low points of your height map. What is the sum of the risk levels of all low points on your height map? Okay, let's grab the puzzle input. Wow, that is bigger than the example. Surprise, surprise. Let's go to IntelliJ. Here's our puzzle input. And we will continue the pattern of renaming those to day 9 in this case. Now we create a package for today. Day 9. Create a Portland file. And then again we will have a main function that we execute and then one for part one and one for part two. So let's open the puzzle input. For day one, we need to find those points that where every neighbor is larger. Can we find one? Like maybe the one here. Every neighbor is larger. So this is, um, how was it called? A low point, I guess. Uh, yeah, a low point. That seems to be fairly easy, I guess. If we create a 2D structure to hold this data, which should be possible, it doesn't look too big for that. Let me go through every point and then grab the neighbors and see if they are all lower. Let's try this. Um, 
Are there any empty spaces here? No. And at the end, let's just get rid of the last line. Doesn't matter for the um, for the puzzle, but I don't want to deal with it. So this is yesterday's answer. We will just close this again and then steal the method for reading the input. Um, we want to read day nine. And what do we want to return? I guess ideally an array of ints. No, an array of an array of ints. Because we want this 2D structure, two dimensional array will give us that. And then every line we take the characters uh, to char array map it to int digit to int let's see of course it could um we could get the ascii value not sure about this is for numbers or we could get this turned into an end, and we need to make sure it's actually the right one. Returns a numeric value of the decimal digit that this character represents. This digit is true or for the char. In this case, the unicode decimal digit of a value of the character is right. Yeah, we can also just make sure this is actually working. Let's open a scratch file, which is a great way of. Um, uh, trying some things in Kotlin without having any files in your project and without having to somehow figure out how to run this in your product. So we have those numbers, we map them to um, its list of characters and then we will call digit to int. Oh, this is already... Then we get three, five, six, seven, and so on, and that looks great. Okay, this is exactly doing what we want. Mm. So now we have a list of a list of ints. Do we care about this? Can we also use lists? Probably. I'm not sure what the list is backed by i guess we w definitely want to have the array access where uh, accessing any element will not require us to loop through the list just to make the neighbor look up look up faster later on i guess we could just turn it into an array again to int array and then the whole thing we will also turn into an array, which is interestingly deprecated because uh, it's not deprecated. Why is it crossed out? It is. <laughs> It is deprecated. This member is not fully supported by Kotlin compiler, so it may be absent of different signatures in the um hmm. Should we go back to just using lists and well, we can try and if it's slow we can still optimize it why is it complaining here oh it shadows the inner one that is true so let's say this is a line and this is a character okay Okay, now let's see if we can print this. 
Oh, and then from main, we need to execute part one actually. Have some coffee while the compiler does things. Make sure we run today's code. Okay, if we have an array that's with three, five, six, and so on. Looks great, it's probably too long. Ah, here's maybe the end, nine, two, one, yeah. I think that looks good. <clears throat> now we essentially loop over it um, by using the index or, yeah. So the first row will be our x row, uh, x in input indices. And then we go over the y axis and let's try this. We print this, and then here we print line, and then we should get exactly the same input again that we read three sex so on and then ends with nine to one last row ends with seven eight nine yeah okay so we are looping over this data correctly so we can get rid of the prints that is working as we want so we have a position here this is um x and y and now we need go away copilot we just need the neighbors of this point and then we see if they are all smaller and then what do we need to do? We need to calculate the risk level. Okay, let's do this all in here for now. And then print risk level. Okay. And so we need the neighbors. Let's say we have a list of a list of ints and we want a function that turns the neighbors, which is a list of ints, just the values of the neighbors. And then we need top, left, right, bottom. So top will be um oh we also need to pass in the point we have an x and a y so top will be um get um same x and then y minus one and this can be null now, so we need to say get or null. And then the left will be get x minus 1 or null. Yeah. Right, x plus 1 and y. Yeah. And then bottom, get x. Okay. And then we return list of list of not null, top, left, right, bottom. So there's one tricky part in the uh, in this thing. If we look at two, for example, there is only right and bottom, and not top and left. We need to look at, but we uh, make this look up simple by just saying we want to look at this position, and if it doesn't exist, just give us null. So we will still try to read the top. That is fine. We will be null, but then we only return the values that are not null. And then we neighbors um, input get neighbors of this point, and then if all neighbors are um, smaller, we can do this neighbors all value is 
larger, I guess, larger than actually need the value. Need to read the value once. If this is if every neighbor is larger than we are at a low point, this means risk level uh, current plus one because risk level is one higher. See what happens if we run this. Index out of bounds. Okay, I was hoping we would avoid this. Let's see where it's failing. Um, if you look left, oh yeah. Uh, in this case, um, the first one is actually moved, so we need get on our, on this side. Now we can just use get if it exists, and then get on now here, and then get here. Let's also change the order so that it's a little bit more readable. So top is always at the same position, and then the top <laughs> the top can be nigh. <laughs> and here we go left first. Yeah, run this again. So we get a risk level of 600. Let's see if this is correct. That's the right answer. Awesome. Let's move on to part two. Next, you need to find the largest basin so you know what areas are most important to avoid. Basin is all locations that eventually flow downward to a single low point. Therefore, every low point has a basin, although some basins are very small. Locations of height 9 do not count as being in any basin, and all other locations will always be part of exactly one basin. The size of a basin is the number of locations within the basin, including the low point. The example above has four basins. Let's see. The top left basin is size 3. Why is this the case? Because uh, this was the one, and okay. And here it's like this. Size nine, size three, and here it's essentially you expand until until you you expand until you have only nine as neighbors. Okay, let's write that. <clears throat> I guess we we could start by reusing the code. We find all the points again. So let's um let's extract this into a function. So if you have a list of lists of ints, and we need to find low points function, and this will return a list of pairs where the pair is the x and y. And for that, we copy this over and do not need input we, because we are an extension function now. Can't use this anymore, so we need to use get. And, oops. Why is it doing this?
let's create a list uh, yes of low points then here if we found a low point we add it and then at the end we return our low points okay let's do this so we read our input we look for low points oh stop ah uh, <laughs> copilot wants to do whatever so we have our input we find our low points and now we need to be smart and expand so again we will need to look up the neighbors um but we do not need the value we need the position let's copy this again neighbor positions <clears throat> and that will be essentially the same we create but we create pairs pair of x and y minus one pair of x y plus one pair of x minus one pair of x plus one and then we will return a list but only of the ones that are valid positions so left right filter is valid so for every point that has an x and a y we will need to check if it's valid And let's write a quick function for that. Is valid and an x and a y. Now we essentially need to check if it's in bounds. Go away. And this will now return a list of points. Well, it means um, x return x is larger or equals null, and x is smaller than size, and y is equal than zero, and y is smaller than um yeah where do we look at either the first position yeah we could since it's since it's always the same in any row we can just get, look at the first row and uh, use the size of the first row convert to range check okay it converted it into a weird range check that does not work. Let's try this again. Oh. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Uh, if X is in the indices, that is easier. And Y is in the indices of the first row. That is simpler, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, IntelliJ. Okay, let's go back. So we have our low points. For every low point, we need to find the basin. Let's create a function for that too. With a list of lists of ints, find 
Very easy. And we want to start looking at this point. Ah, go away. So let's loop over the points. Point. So we try to find the basin for in this input for this point. So how do we find the basin? Essentially, we need this point, and we look at the neighbors and expand from there and expand from there and. While we do this, we need to make sure that we remember which points we already visited so that we do not go in circles all the way, all the time. And then we yeah, we expand. If, if one of the neighbors is not nine, then we will add it to the list and continue our search there. Yeah. It's a nice, re almost recursive problem but instead instead of using a recursive function i think we will just use um, a list of points that we will need to search that uh, gets larger and then smaller again and yeah let's write this so we need um a list of visited points is a mutable list of a pair and then um, we need yeah q is a good name i guess mutable list of pairs and then um let's actually say list or uh, mutable list of and we already can throw in our first pair which is the point we are at and then we say while the queue is not empty um now go away i want to write this myself um we say first off we say we visited this point hello at So we get a point from the queue and we say, okay, we visited this point, awesome. Then we will ask for the neighbors. Ah, now I should stick with this <laughs> version of neighbors and we ask for the neighbors of this point. And then please, Get up, co-pilot. You are not helping right now. L let me... Is there a button somewhere to just disable it temporarily? Like... Shut up for a second. <laughs> Get up, co-pilot. Disable completions. Uh, option, shift, command, O. Oh. Shift command. Oh, ah, does this change anything here? Oh, yeah. And then um, option shift command. Oh, we'll also turn it back on. Okay. Shut up. Get up, co pilot. We will do this ourselves. Um, we have all the neighbors, and then we, for every neighbor, We see um, get oh no, not neighbors on because we need neighbor neighbor positions, and for every neighbor we see if this point is not nine 
Oh, sorry. And we already know that this will be a valid point because we already check before we add it. Um, before we return a neighbor position. If this is not 9, then we say, um, hey, this is a thing we should look at. And then we continue. Uh, there's one thing we need to make sure. Um, what is this? Immutable list. Is it possible to have immutable set? Yeah. Okay. Because then we turn those into sets. Make sure they do not exist multiple times in one. And then... Oh, sorry, if we already visited this neighbor, if you already visited this neighbor, then we do not need to do anything on at all because we already know this neighbor. Otherwise. We continue. Okay, now we can't get the first one. Why is why does set not allow us to give the first one? It's a mutable set. Oh, because it the set doesn't have an order, I guess. So we we'll, let's use. pop function no uh, remove zero uh, remove first okay so we need to make sure that we do not add those multiple times even though it's not, not a big problem because the next time we will see did we already visit this one and if we did we will ignore it. So we can add things multiple times to the queue. This is cheaper to do. And then the basin is essentially a list of points. It's exactly our list of visited points. Can call it a set. <clears throat> so if we have the basin, we need to determine its size, which is just uh, the number of elements. So we can just say some some by is the wrong one. What was? I think in, on every day where we needed to uh, calculate a sum, I used sum by and it was deprecated. Sum of. Sum of. And then we just sum the size of every basin and then we print it. Let's see if this works. Well, we are still running part one. Let's run part two. Um, we get a number. We do not uh, have an endless loop or whatever. No exceptions. Let's test it. That is not the right answer. Your answer is too low. You're stuck, make sure you're using the full input data. There are also some general tips on the about page or you can ask friends on the subreddit. Please wait one minute before trying again. Okay. <clears throat> Let's look at this example again.
I guess we could um, try what we did last time. We used this for debugging the example and have a peek. what the answer is and then compare it okay part two this is read input let's create a read debug input it's just the same one well let's do what we did yesterday let us specify the file name by default it's day nine Uh, day 9 debug needs to go here. And then we say we want to read day 9 debug. Day 9 debug. Oh, I named it debug nine debug. We get a sum of 17. Oh, uh, maybe we should actually read the actual, the actual <laughs> thing we should provide. Let's go back to day nine. No one wants wants the sum. That that was the case. I don't know <laughs> where. Find the three largest basins and multiply their multiply their sizes together. All right. Let's still use the the debug one. So we map to the basins. Now we have the basins, and now we sort them. Um, well, let's just sort them here. So, sorted by um, points, and we we need the largest one. So let's say sort descending points, and by its size, and then we need the first three and need to multiply them. Okay, result is basins, and we take three, and then um, I guess we need to reduce. Um, Reduce gets um, but we don't want to reduce it to a set of pairs. Can we or we can what is S T? This is a function that gets S and T. So we, we actually want to have, um, we also need to define a start value. Is reduce maybe the wrong choice? What is the, I thought that's a reduce. And a map and reduce, that should be reduce, right? Well, we can do it different way. Let's do it the manual way. We start with a result of one because it's uh, cheap to multiply multiply by one uh, points, and result equals result. 
times point size and print result. Yeah, we can use times equals. Sure, let's run in. For the debug input, we get 42. That is wrong. Um, let's print the sizes we get. Find the three in the above. It's nine times. The size is how many points are in there, and uh, that part was correct, yeah. Um, let's see what sizes we actually find. 14, 14 and 3. Okay, let's go back. This is this is weird because we should have three low points. Uh, if we take all of them, just fourteen and three. Let's, um, printer size. We know it's two. Um. So maybe our function to find low points is wrong, but it we got the first we the first one was correct, so we only find two. Let's go back. Is it oh wait. No, this is the input. Yeah, that's the right input. And we only find two low points in here. Did I miss anything? I mean, low points seem to be the right thing because we already wrote this function did we do something wrong when we when we wrote this find low points I mean, we had the right risk level, so... Okay, now I'm confused. Why, why is low points not working anymore? If all neighbors value is larger than the current. This is exactly the same kind of function we used. Why is this a problem now? We were able to find the right risk level.
So which ones did we find though? Let's print those. Low point. At x, y, and that one equals um, input x, y. Okay, let's see which one did we find. We find one at zero one. This one. Yeah, and we find one at two 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 two. This one, the five. Why did we not find this one and this one? I guess we need to debug it manually, I guess. Um, if x equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so it's index nine, no, yeah, and y equals zero. And let's look at the neighbors. Bus of nine zero. Mm. No, <laughs> that's just a value of the neighbor. We never get to this point. Oh, we missed the last and first one. Let's go back. Where do we? But we did print all of them, right? Current. I, th I thought we printed those, so everything was awesome. What? Why is this only <laughs> on a small version? Oh no! <laughs> We don't go over all items. We actually need to go over all Y's. <laughs> We only always knew, use the range of x, but the range of y's is different. 
Okay, now we get more low points. Okay, let's get rid of all the prints. I guess we have four low points. Is this right? No, it's not right. Let's go back. Let's look at the output again. Now we got four low points, which is better. One, two, three. Four. Oh no, it's correct. Sorry, I was. I thought we had five. There are four low points. Okay. Um. The result in the example is. Uh, yeah, we are printing all of them right now, so let's go back. We only want to take the largest three. We get 1134, which is for the example the right answer. Okay, let's go and remove our debug locks. We do not need this anymore. Don't care about that or that. Um, no need the low points, and we can keep this, I guess. But do not need to print those. Run this quickly. Yeah, we get four basins, and then the result for only the First three is one one three four. Okay, now let's run this with day nine again. And we get this one. Pass it in. That's the right answer. Awesome. Yeah. So I will push this code to GitHub again. You can uh, grab it from my GitHub repository. Let me know. How you solve the puzzle and then um, yeah, see you tomorrow. Bye bye.